My question is, how do I enjoy working on things that I don't want to work on or find interesting or fun? Ah, the, the reality. Okay, cool. So, let's have this discussion. One, when you see... It's like that, that iceberg thing. When you see something that you want to do as a, as a job, as a living, you have to understand that that specific individual thing is probably an extremely small part of the overall process. If you want to be an actor, you will not be working in massive Hollywood productions immediately. Chances are you'll have to do some TV work. Maybe you'll have to do some advert work. You'll have to do a hell of a lot of role play work, which is when companies hire actors to pretend to be customers or medical kind of staff hire actors and tell them you have to have this exact issue and our doctors, our trainee doctors, are going to try and diagnose you. I have a lot of friends that make a lot of money doing that. They, I mean, every week they have to go into a hospital with a different illness and work with uh, trainee doctors to get diagnosed. You have to do a lot of crap jobs to find the one or two good jobs. I mean, put it this way. I had a friend, really good friend, a guy called Dean. He was in Game of Thrones for a while. He was uh, a character with some lines in Game of Thrones. Fantastic. That's pretty cool. That finished filming, within two or three weeks, he was holding a Pizza Hut sign on the corner of a street because there was no acting work and he needed money. So he went to do that. A few weeks after that, he was able to get cast in some kind of Anton Deck thing on TV and BBC in the UK. A few weeks after that, he was in Star Wars. He was one of the X-Wing pilots. And a few weeks after that, he was back bartending. And then a few weeks after that, I think now he's in um, Broadchurch. It's like a TV drama thing over in the UK, but he's doing fine for himself anyway. That thing, that dude was grinding. You know, I knew the guy at university, and he was one of the few. And I met a couple of people at university, and some people just have this vibe of they're going to succeed. They're going to do really well. I don't know what they're going to do well at, but they're going to do really well. So, when I met um, when I met Dean, I knew he was going to do really damn well, and he has done well for himself. But if you want to make video games. There will be a time where maybe you're making crap mobile phone games. And as much as I might not like those games, I respect that somebody has to make them and you've got to put food on the table. You've got to pay your bills. You've got to, you know, get through life. That's okay. You've got to take those crap jobs. Maybe one day you'll be designing a quest for the next World of Warcraft. Maybe the next day you'll be designing a burger for a mobile phone gacha game. Who knows? And when you say, how do you enjoy every element of stuff that you don't want to do. Sometimes you don't need to enjoy it, you just need to do it and know that it's part of the process. I don't necessarily enjoy waking up early to go to the gym. It's not something that I wake up and I'm full of joy and I'm happy, but there is a, there is a decision that you have to make where constant endless joy will not always gel with the goal that you want to have at the end of your life. I mean, as they say, comfort is the enemy of ambition. And when someone says, oh, I don't want to do that, I don't enjoy it, you might not enjoy hiking up a mountain. It might hurt. Your legs will burn. You will run out of food. You will be thirsty. It will not be a 100% full fun experience the whole time. But when you have completed it, there is a great feeling of achievement. There is a great positive feeling of I have achieved. I've done that. And you feel good about yourself. And one of the things when you say, how do you enjoy doing the stuff that you don't want to do to get to the place you don't want to get to? You don't need to enjoy it. Don't sit there thinking, I'm not enjoying this. I, I should. No, no. Step back and go, look, I don't enjoy this. This is not fun. But I am going to do it because this is part of the process in order to get there. You don't need to enjoy every part of the process. Sometimes you just have to understand that the end goal of the process is worth going through the shit to get to it. I feel accomplished never doing it again. Yeah, I mean, some people, they run a marathon. That, by the way, that skybox in the distance is gorgeous. Some people run a marathon. You think you feel good at the end of a marathon? Before you cross that finish line, you feel like crap. You cross it, then you feel good. Then you feel good. And I think one of the... And again, I'm going to sound like an old man boomer at this point, but tell me if you agree or not. One of the things that I see in a lot of students, 
from honestly infants to primary school to secondary school college university i see a lot of students give up if they don't like every part of a process they want to be successful but they often don't want to go through the process of the negative experiences that bring you to that success i really hate that i mean i i love my job as a youtuber i love my job as a twitch streamer this i am so incredibly grateful and privileged and happy that i get to do this this is an absolute dream come true for me it's fantastic do i like every single part of it no i hate editing so much but i don't sit there and think oh i wish i just had a youtube video ready i sit there and think right time to edit this is my job this is what i go through this is what we have to do so yeah patience is the key to it sometimes something will suck and you just have to keep pushing through until you get to the bit that you like and people say to me why don't you just hire an editor no i know exactly how i want my vid videos edited i know the exact moment that i want them to cut to just hire an editor okay that's fine that's a fair thing to make consider this i've just finished playing tomb raider 2. tomb raider 2 took me 18 hours to finish taking notes while i play the game i record every single second of my entire gameplay when i say in my script and then i found an item behind the box i know exactly roughly within that playthrough where that moment is and i can cut to it within a couple of minutes i know kind of roughly where to get to it if i were to send that 18 hours of footage to an editor and say hey here's the voiceover i haven't given you any timestamps because i don't take timestamps i just remember when stuff happens i would then expect an editor to sit and watch all 18 hours of footage and match it up with my voiceover you're paying an editor by the hour you're paying them for their time to sit and watch the footage then you're paying them for their time to edit then you're paying them for the time to render it and send it over to you i would end up paying hundreds potentially thousands to an editor to do that when i can just sit and do it myself hey the gamer subs logo worked see it ran onto the stream what a perfect way to end the rant if you go to gamer subs and use code josh you can get money off some powder there we go capitalism yay yeah am i not a billionaire I know, it's so unfair, I'm not. And I've stopped having avocado toast and everything. I've stopped having my five pounds a day coffee, which was very easy because I didn't have that anyway. I love that boom mentality. Oh, you children could afford houses if you stopped having your five pound a day coffee. Okay, cool, let's, uh, let's just do some quick maths and uh, check that, five pound a day times uh, let's say that you miss one or two in the year so let's say 360 that's uh, 1800 pounds what's the average house price in the uk that's uh, about 200,000 pounds and you need roughly a 10 percent deposit when you purchase a house that'd be about 20,000 pounds so if you did stop having your five pound a day coffee and you saved 1800 pounds a year you would have a down payment for a house in only 12 years not counting for inflation or any kind of you know increase or decrease in anything else fantastic that's great guys just have the coffee i love that i very much love that it's like you said old people what did i do oh we we saved up did you oh we paid our own way through university and college how much did it cost oh 300 pounds a year and i worked down at the local butchers for 10 pounds an hour all right cool cool the problem with people that don't understand how money works is that no matter how many graphs and charts you show them, nothing will be quite as important to them as their feelings. And they feel that you aren't working hard enough. Chances are you're probably working harder than almost any generation that came before in very, very taxing, very menial jobs. And this is not to downplay the achievements of any previous generation. It's saying that every single generation thinks the one that comes after it is lazy. They're not. And look. I love the advice of just go around to the, the shops, hand your CVs to them. Uh, that doesn't work. That's not worked for a hell of a long time. 
In fact, I had a rather vindicating moment with my mum a couple of years ago because my mum very much gave me the advice of, oh, yeah, just just walk into the shop, just hand in your CV, your firm handshake, talk to the manager, you get a job. And I had to explain to her, look, mum, I love you, but this is not how job hunting works anymore. It is all online. It is write a CV, it is upload it, it is go through their own stupid proprietary system where you write out everything on your CV again for some reason and then upload your CV just in case they want it twice, just to not be heard to, you know, not be replied to. And then unfortunately, she lost her job and had to go and go job hunting. And after a couple of months, she walked up to me and she said, I'm really sorry. I was wrong. I can't find the job at all. This is terrible. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to, I'm not going to say I told you so, but I will help you fill out the online CVs. But there was a, a moment of vindication where I was like, you get it now. You get it. I mean, put it, put it this way. My granddad has a stamp collection and he has priced up his stamp collection. He's tried to work out how much his stamp collection is worth. He's been pricing it from a book that is 23 years old that contains all the prices for the stamps. 23 years ago. And I'm thinking, granddad, God bless you, I love you. But no. This is not. We don't do this. Just You are going to love Google. Amazing. My mum still has a printed out map in her car, like an atlas. One of those you know, UK driving atlases from like 1996. It's very lucky that nothing has been built in the UK since 1996. Because if it had been, that would be wrong. Get that lady a phone. She's got one. She just refuses to use the GPS. She's like... Well, what if it's wrong? I'm like, no, you're spot on. You're absolutely correct. It's very, very likely that the you know world class military technology is incorrect. Whereas your 30 year old printed out map in the footwell of your car that I've stamped on since I was a child, that's probably more accurate. Let's trust that instead. Yeah, directions printed out from MapQuest. That's how old I am.